Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about role of MRI in sinonasal pathologies, which is a case-based discussion. 50-year-old male came with complaints of bilateral nasal obstruction, which is more on right side, bordering nasal discharge, post-nasal drip, and headache. Soft tissue mass was seen on nasal endoscopic examination. MRI was done. It is showing T1 iso intense and T2 heterogeneously hyperintense lobulated polypoidal lesion occupying the right maxillary sinus, extending medially into the right nasal cavity through the Biden maxillary ostium. On T2 weighted imaging, you are seeing a stalk at the level of the maxillary ostium. And here we are seeing the lesion is extending into the posterior nasopharynx through the coana. There is no any DWI restriction. On post contrast imaging, we are seeing peripheral enhancement of the lesion. There is no any central enhancement or any other abnormal nodular enhancing lesions. On CT screening, there is erosion of the medial wall of the maxillary sinus and lateral wall of the nasal cavity and erosions of the right inferior turbinate, middle turbinate and uncinate process. Differentials can be anticoinal polyp with secondary changes, inverted papilloma, acetial neuroblastoma, juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, fungal sinusitis which is allergic or invasive, sinonasal organized hematoma, maxillary sinus mucosal. So to narrow down our differential diagnosis, we should look at the following diagnostic clues. We should check the age of the patient, location of the lesion, post contrast enhancement, any bony changes, destructions or erosions, typical imaging appearance, infiltration or intraorbital or intracranial extensions. So the final diagnosis of our case came as inflammatory anticoinal polyp on HPE. Coming to discussion, anticoinal polyp is a solitary sinonasal polyp that arises within the maxillary sinus, pass through and enlarge the ostium and posterior nasal cavity at the level of the coana, most common in teenagers and young adults. Imaging on CT we see as low mucoid density mass lesion with maxillary antral origin connected by narrow stalk from the maxillary ostium into the nasal cavity giving a dumbbell shaped lesion. If large, it leads to bony destruction. It may have hyperdensity centrally depending on the chronicity or fungal colonization. We usually see as T1 ISO2 low signal intensity lesion, T2 high signal intensity lesion. But on post contrast, we see thin peripheral rim enhancement. No central portion enhancement is seen. To inverted papilloma, it is most commonly seen in middle aged men. The most common location is at the lateral wall of the nasal cavity related to middle turbinate, middle meatus, and maxillary ostium. On CT, soft tissue density mass with some enhancement is seen. Bony resorption may or may not be seen depending on the size of the lesion. And the point to be noted here is focal cone shaped hyperostosis is seen, which is the point of the origin of the lesion. MRI, the lesion is iso intense to muscle on T1 weighted images. It demonstrates the convoluted cerebroform pattern representing the alternating lines of high and low signal, which is seen on T2 and T1 post contrast images. The term cerebriform pattern is also used in congenital adrenal hyperplasia, plasma cytoma, which is mini brain appearance, Caesarean syndrome, which is which has cerebriform nuclei, and pembicus vegetans, which shows cerebriform tongue. Aesthesia neuroblastoma has bimodal age distribution. The most common location is in the superior olfactory recess, giving the dumbbell shaped mass with waste at the level of the cribriform plate. On CT, the mass is of soft tissue attenuation with focal calcification. Bony margins are often remodeled or eroded. On MRA, both T1 and T2 show heterogeneous intermediate signal intensity. On post contrast, variable enhancement which can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. Juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma is seen in young males centered in the posterior nasal cavity near sphenopalatine foramen. On CCT, it is seen as intensely enhancing soft tissue mass. Here we can see the Homan Miller sign that is anterior bowing of the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. MRI, heterogeneous intermediate signal intensity is seen both in T1 weighted and T2 weighted images. Punctate and serpentine flowoids are seen within the tumor. Intense post contrast enhancement with flowoids is seen giving the salt and pepper appearance. Angiography is useful for defining the feeding vessels, the most common being the internal maxillary artery. Juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, salt and pepper appearance is also seen in the 
vertebral hemangioma, hyperparathyroidism, Jogren syndrome, HIV associated salivary gland disease, autosomal recessive polycystic disease, paragangliomas, metastatic hypernephroma, metastatic thyroid carcinoma. Maxillary sinus mucosal is homogeneously low attenuating expansile lesion within the maxillary sinus giving the clouding appearance of the adjacent bony structures and it has hyperdense areas related to discussion of the secretions or fungal colonization. Bony sinus walls may be thinned or remodeled or focally absent but lacks aggressive osseous destruction. On MRI, it is T1 hypointense and T2 hyperintense if the content is water rich, T1 hyperintense and T2 hypointense if the content is protein rich. Post contrast enhancement on CT or MR if present occurs only thin peripheral rim enhancement. If thickened peripheral mucosa is present, it suggests infected mucosal that is mucopiosal. Sinonasal organized hematoma is a rare expansile entity in middle-aged patient most common in maxillary sinus occurring due to the trauma or recurring hemorrhage within the obstructed PNS. On CT, isodense to hyperdense soft tissue opacification of the sinus is seen and smooth scalloping and erosions of the bony margins are seen which is indicating of the underlying expansile process or mass. Shows T1 isointense lesion. Hyperintensities are seen if recent hemorrhage is present. T2 heterogeneous signal intensity is seen with peripheral hypointense rim due to the presence of fibrosis. SWI shows susceptibility artifact due to hemorrhage. Marked papillary, patchy, or frond like enhancement is seen on post contrast CT or MR images. Malignant conditions like squamous cell carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, melanoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma has variable presentation showing aggressive heterogeneously enhancing masses with DWI restriction, hemorrhagic components, bony destructions and calcifications, extensions and infiltration into the adjacent intraorbital and intracranial structures is seen. Important points on infective fungal sinusitis. Acute rhinosinusitis is seen in less than 4 weeks. Air fluid levels are pathognomic on CT with or without mucosal thickening. T1 iso intense and T2 variable signal intensity is seen depending on the content. Chronic rhinosinusitis is seen after 12 weeks. On CT, hyperostrosis and sclerosis of the adjacent bony walls are pathognomic. On MRI, T1 iso intensity and T2 hyperintensity is seen. It may vary depending on the content. Allergic fungal sinusitis usually affect multiple sinus. On CT, it shows center hyperdensity and peripheral hypodensity. On MRI, it shows T2 hypointensity in the center and T1 variable signal intensity. Mystoma usually affect single sinus which is a chronic non-invasive form. On CT, isodensity of the sinus with central areas of hyperdensity and calcifications may or may not be seen. T1 and T2 weighted images show hypointensity. In all these four conditions, we see lining mucosa will be enhancing on post contrast. Whereas in invasive fungal sinusitis, if the enhancement is absent, it is known as black turbinate sign because of the necrosis. It can be acute, chronic and granulomatous. On CT, hyperattenuating or isodense mucosal thickening will be seen with bony destruction. No hyperdensity will be seen in acute phase. T1 and T2 show intermediate to low signal intensity. And since it is invasive form, the adjacent structures which are invaded show enhancement. Diagnostic pearls on the old talk are anthraquinal polyp show peripheral rim enhancement which has dumbbell shape. Inverted papilloma show focal hyperostrosis on CT which is the site of origin of the lesion. And it has alternating hyper and hypointense line which gives convoluted cerebriform pattern. Esthesia neuroblastoma show homogeneous or heterogeneous contrast enhancement which has dumbbell shape with waist at the cribriform plate. Juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma show intense post contrast enhancement with flow voids. It gives salt and pepper appearance and it also has Homan Miller sign on radiograph and CT. Sinonasal organized hematoma show patchy or papillary or frond like enhancement. And sinonasal mucosid is an expansive lesion it has minimal peripheral rim enhancement whereas malignant lesions are heterogeneously enhancing which are extending into adjacent intracranial and intraorbital structures.